Hey, what's up, my dudes? So just letting you guys know, if you want to go follow me, add me up, any of that kind of stuff, hit me a DM, send me a message, whatever you want to do. My username for all this stuff is just Spencer Turley, no spaces and no capital letters. I don't normally get on like Xbox and PlayStation anymore, but sometimes I do, depending on what kind of game it is. So yeah, man, either way, definitely hit me up on Insta to get in my Discord. I'll get you in there from that. And yeah, let's get into this video, boys. Team Fried, not so baked anymore, you know what I'm saying, dudes? <laughs> Uh, got us some news going here. So this just came out on Racer X like a day or two ago or whatever, right? Pretty new news. Holy jump, that's a hug, daddy. So, all right, wanted to get my quick opinion on this whole thing. So Jason Anderson leaving Alden Baker. They started back in 2014. A lot of people are going to kind of get a little bit of a crazy opinion here, like, oh my gosh, this is the end for Anderson. Anderson's never going to win again, whatever, right? You know, I can already kind of see people would start thinking down that sort of a road. And let me just say this. I think it comes down to anytime any of these top riders get with Alden Baker for like at least three or four years, they pretty much learn the whole system of what Alden's doing, okay? They pretty much learn all of his different prep, meal, plan, workout routines, and I'm sure he changes it throughout the years, and yeah, the times do change, and I'm sure he adjusts for different people, and you know, it's not just like a one stagnant sort of a routine that somebody can just learn off of a piece of paper real quick and then have it. I don't really think it's like that, but I certainly think like anytime you've been a Anderson or a Villapoto or a Censorillo or whatever. I'm rhyming like I'm rapping, Doug. Anytime you can do that, be with him long enough to kind of really learn what's going down. It's not like you really got to stay with the guy at that point. I just don't really think it's as critical at that point as what some people might think that it is. You understand what I'm saying? So I definitely don't think this is like the end of Anderson or anything like that. Um, and, it, you know, it just kind of goes into, look at what, you know, Roxon's kind of went through. I mean, he left, man, I got to hit that jump harder. He left, uh, you know, left Alden Baker, same way as Censorillo. And, yeah, you can make the argument that their careers definitely had some hardships after they left Alden. But nowadays, they've kind of gotten it all back around. Both of them have. Roxon and Censorillo have both gotten it back going. So, it's not like you have to be with Alden all the way through. I mean, I, I just don't think it's as critical once you've done been with Alden for a few years and you've kind of learned it all. I, and I, I personally think Anderson is not even really the kind of guy that even wants to be in that kind of an environment, right? The team fried, let's chill out. I love what Anderson's doing, by the way. He's kind of kind of making a whole new mold, a whole new... Like, bro, you can chill out and try to have fun with this while you're racing at the top level. I think it definitely does get too serious a lot of times. And, yeah, I mean, you want to win. And, yeah, it takes being serious to win. But I guarantee you there's so many of them that have taken it too serious, burnt themselves out, and then didn't make it anyways or whatever, you know, didn't get the full potential or results out anyways. It is kind of a rare breed to have somebody that can just sit there and just grind, 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 not make any fun out of it ever. I mean, I can only think of a few people that would even remotely be like that, like Carmichael or whoever. And even Carmichael wants there to be fun in it, you know? So it's just kind of a, yeah, you do need the routine. Yeah, you do need all the little puzzle pieces and really putting the hard work in and all that. But I could definitely see where being with an Alden Baker would get quite taxing over a period of, you know, six years, six plus years. Like, I don't blame Anderson at all for doing this, right? I think I'm going to wreck on that jump every single lap, but we won't talk about that, boys. Um, so, yeah, you know, like, I, I just really, woohoo, quads. I really think that um, it's just not that big of a deal, really. I know it's kind of like somewhat bigger news or whatever you want to consider it, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal. I don't think it's going to change that much. I don't think all of a sudden it's going to be like Anderson sucks. 
if anything, I think it's going to make Anderson a little better at the beginning when he first comes back from uh, when all the Supergrass starts back up or outdoors is going or whatever. I think he's going to be a little better just from bit being a refreshment, kind of getting with the new whatever new uh trainer or being in a new gym doing some new stuff it kind of just refreshes everybody and that's what creates longevity in a career right you know anderson's one of those he's already kind of pretty quite a bit older than the typical because you know him and Seely, they spent quite a bit of extra time in that 250 class they were or i don't know how much time they really spent there but they were they were older than the typical right for being in the 250 class i mean hell Sealy's already retired, right? So for Anderson, I think he's just looking for longevity at this point. He's looking to have fun at it. And it's just kind of that balance, you know? It's like, do you want to burn it? You know, do you want to burn it on both ends and have a, you know, half the career time wise? Or do you want to chill out a little bit and extend your career for, um, man, you got to be wide open on that puppy. Uh, thank God they fixed the tough blocks or I'd have popped off right there. You know, so it's that balance of like, do you want to burn the wick on both ends and, you know, have a way shortened down career or do you want to have more fun with it? I mean, it's kind of the whole, there's just, there's a balance you got to strike with all that, right? Um, because really at the end of the day, the reason why you even get into it to begin with is to have fun with it. But yes, there is the side of if you don't take it super, super serious then you're just going to get smoked because everybody else is taking it super, super serious because the competition level has just gotten to an insane degree, physical, in the whole nine yards, right? Everybody wants to win. Everybody wants to be the champion. Everybody thinks they can be the champion. So it kind of, you know, it kind of starts getting into that. The competition level nowadays is definitely on a whole nother realm than what it used to be. And there's so many more people with top trainers like Alden now, right? He's got a lot of the Husky and KTM dudes now. So, but I, I just, I think this might actually be a very good decision for somebody like Anderson, right? Team fried, kind of more laid back, chill, just trying to have fun with it. And I'm telling you, it's one of those things like, yeah, you need to train hard. Yeah. You need to grind hard, but there's a point where you're just putting in, and this even goes with anything. This goes with doing YouTube videos. This goes with anything, dog. I've experienced this quite a number of times with YouTube where you get in such a repetitive rut where you're just doing it. You're just going through the motions. You're just so, you just become lifeless. You become numb to everything that you're doing. And <clears throat> let's crash on that another 25 times. <laughs> that, that jump is so abrupt. You're hitting like a seven rhythm in, jumping the whole rhythm in one jump. But um, like like I'm saying, I've noticed that multiple times of doing YouTube, um, how... Like, you can get in such a, you're just going through the motions, you're just making the videos, you're just putting the laps in, you're just doing it just to do it. You're just doing it because doing it you know you need to do it, versus finding the want to do it, right? And what happens is, if you don't really have the, the want and the excitement for it and the passion behind it and the, you know, you're really in the moment, living in it, doing it you know, living, eating, sleeping, breathing, wanting to do it, you're just doing it to do it, it doesn't ever really work out that great when you start getting in that sort of a repetitive rut of just doing it just to do it, knowing that you need to do the repetitions. You got to find the passion. You got to find the want to do it. That's what's so important with any of it, I've found, because if you don't have that passion behind it, then you come off as just just not really invested, not really into it, not really in the moment. You're just doing it, right? And especially on YouTube, that's one of those things you've got to be living in the moment. You've got to be enjoying it, or it comes off as you're just spitting out, you know, kind of half ass content that you don't really care about, right? And you're not really putting the real effort behind and the heart behind it. And it's it comes out in riding too, and pro racing too, right? Like, you you know, on the practice track, you might be putting the time in and doing the laps and doing all that. But when it comes to race time, you don't really have, oh my God, we're making gains out here, boys. Um, you don't really have the want to win because you've already, you know, wasted all your energy with trying to train too hard or trying to practice too hard. And you've lost the want to win. 
That's probably the most important, one of the key, most key aspects to it at that level, because everybody's putting the time in, everybody's putting the laughs in, everybody's putting the training in. It's who wants it the most, who has the most passion to really want to win. Like, that's what it comes down to. You got to really want, you got to really want it. You got to really want to do it for it to really happen. It don't matter what you're doing. If you don't really want it deep down, it don't even matter anyways. Right? Don't matter how much time you put in. You might get some mediocre results kind of doing that, but if you lose the excitement for it and you lose the want for it and you lose the passion for it, what the hell is the point anyways? There is no point, right? So versus trying to find like a a repetitive doing, you know, the training as hardcore as you can and grinding as hardcore as you can, the more important thing than doing that is finding the want for it finding the passion for it, and then all that grinding and repetitive just becomes easy. Just becomes like you just want to do it because you want the win, because you want to do that. Like, you know what I mean? Versus forcing yourself to do it. There's such a big difference in forcing yourself to do something when you don't want to do it and wanting to do it and wanting to succeed and pushing it because when you want to succeed... See, you push it that extra 5% on the practice track. The whole time you're on the practice track, every lap that you're on the practice track, you're pushing it, pushing it, because you want to win, right? Versus, like, when somebody's just over there forcing you to do it, and you're, like, getting in a rut, you're getting in a repetitive, stagnant, it's the training's a little overboard, or whatever the case may be, you know what I mean? You got to find your own balance. You got to find your own what works for you as a person. And we've kind of seen that over the years now with some of these dudes. It works with Alden. Some of them, it doesn't really work with Alden. Tomac's not with Alden. And you see how fast he's going. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Alden has the numbers. Yeah, it's undeniable. The past, I don't know, decade worth of champions or more have been straight from Alden. So you can't question it, right? But I'm just saying... It doesn't necessarily mean everything to be with Alden Baker. So either way, Jason Anderson, he kind of went in there and said a little, a uh, couple of few things on the Racer X, Racer X post. And he just kind of went in there explaining that same thing, you know, just kind of like he needed a new, new place to be at, needed a new thing to do. He was getting kind of tired of that, that repetitive Alden Baker training, whatever, um, so he just needs something to something new to kind of get him going. I think we're going to see a lot a lot more out of Anderson in the next couple years than we have like this year cuz you know he had that injury and then it kind of took him out of last year which I thought he was just getting back to where he was going to start, you know, really getting up there again last year and um he had that injury so it kind of put him back and then then what happened was anytime you're trying to like get an injury, it takes you away from potential time learning. And then so it's almost like it takes you another year just to get back where you were. So I think it's going to take, and we've seen that with Roxon, We've seen that with a lot of dudes since Rillo, right? Seen that with a lot of dudes. Anytime they have an injury, man, it really puts them back. But um, either way, I think that like, you're going to see the, what you expect is Anderson, like potential title contender, next year in the next year right i think that's really when you're going to start seeing that so it'll be interesting to see but yeah anderson you can't blame the guy he's just trying to have more fun with it trying to make it last and he's already won a supercross title i think that's really opened up the doors for anderson to be able to even do this to begin with to be able to even really have this like team fried and um you know kind of like uh just kind of being a little more loose with everything doing whatever the heck he wants to do you can't really do that as much when you're just a 250 dude, unproven 250 dude, or even when you're an unproven 450. Like If you're not really a 450 champion, you can't really do what you want to do because you're kind of forced to be that super serious, hey, I'm taking it serious, I'm not playing around. You almost have to force yourself into that sort of mentality for the team owners to want to continue to dedicate the time to you. But once you become a super gosh champion, it's like, dog, I've already done it, like, so then it opens up the doors to you, you really start getting the personality out of these Supercross riders and who they really are. And once they win that Supercross title or the motocross title, either one in the 450 class, that's when you really start seeing the true personalities of the guys come out. Right. Um, so that's interesting to see that out of Anderson now. Um, so, but yeah, 
I think you're going to see a whole new Anderson for sure. Um, and I don't really mean in a bad way either. I mean, like you're going to, I say whole new, I meant like whole new compared to the last couple years when he's kind of been off of it after his championship. I think you're going to see that like, you know, shirt tail hanging out wide open, really getting decent results. Anderson, you know, he's kind of got it, gotten to a little bit of a laid back style, a little bit of a consistent style. He's got to find that, you know, wicked. he's got to get the wiggy, wiggy, wiggy back, right? He's kind of lost that a little bit over the past two years, but um, and I think he'll do it now. You know, he had talked about in his Racer X post that he was trying to find that one tenth on the track or whatever, and it, it just doesn't work so well for him. I mean, yeah, he won a Supergoss title under Alden, so you can't really deny it, and he wasn't den- he wasn't denying that either. You know, it wasn't like they ended on bad terms or anything. He just needed something different, so. Yeah, I think, it, think it's a good move for Anderson, actually. Of all the dudes that I would say that's a good move for, Anderson's definitely one of them. Roxon's one of them, too, you know? I feel like Roxon's a lot more of a laid-back, chill, let's-go-serve or whatever kind of dude than you would think. Like, I think he's more... Uh, whereas, like, Tomac, in my opinion, is more of the cut, clean cut, not really going out and doing a whole lot. Like, you know, he is just... I think it would benefit a Tomac to be on a Alden Baker, you know, program, but that's just me. You know, Tomac's kind of more of that Carmichael-y, not so party, not so go have fun. Let's just take it super serious. But he is starting to lighten up a little bit nowadays. So either way, I could go on forever about this. Just wanted to kind of talk about this, kind of give the information out there. Let's I was about to say let's pop off that jump one more time for the video, but it luckily didn't happen. So. Can almost quad up over to that, but that's a quad daddy. Lots of quad daddies on this track. So either way, let me know down below what you guys think about this change. I think it's good for Anderson. Um, I really do. I just think he's one of those kind of guys that's going to benefit and have a better career overall by not being with Alden the whole time. But it's just my own personal opinion. And he knows the he knows the ropes. He knows what Alden does now. So it doesn't. It's not like he. And that costs a lot. You know what I'm saying? That cost a lot of money to keep Alden actually as your full-time trainer. That it probably ain't no cheap thing, right? So you got to take that into account too. I mean, if you're spending a hundred thousand a year on a trainer, like, whoo, that's cutting into the that's cutting into the wallet, right? And if you are, if you don't really really need it, you know, you got to make smart decisions at that point. So either way, appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Later, dudes.